Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ben. Welcome to the Swanky Cat Productions channel. For those of you that follow my weekly videos, you know that I cannot leave anything stock and the 2020 Polaris Sportsman XP1000S is going to be no different. Definitely need to get a different set of headlights on here. Or I guess maybe I should say fog lights because for some reason that's actually what Polaris decided to put in here. So if you're going to try to replace these, it's gonna be kind of hard to find something that's compatible. Now, I've worked with quite a few different LED manufacturers on videos in the past, and I went through all of the stuff that they had available and just really couldn't find anything that I liked or anything at least that I thought would have worked and also been somewhat of a reasonable price. But then luckily I came across this kit that is specially made for Polaris Sportsman. So we've got three lights here instead of two or four like most kits that you're gonna find are gonna get. And then they actually make and sell this wiring harness that will attach to this wire that they've got on this 12 inch light bar. And you can buy this all as a kit. They've got a bunch of different stuff like this for Polaris Sportsman's, for Rangers, all sorts of stuff. So make sure you take a look down in the description. I'll have a link for this stuff. Now, if you notice that paid promotion bubble at the top of the screen in the beginning of the video, that doesn't mean that I'm getting paid to tell you that this kit is awesome. All it means is that I was able to talk these guys into sending this stuff out for me to test. So I have no sort of reason to tell you guys that this is a good kit or that you need to buy this kit. I'm not making any money if you buy it. So if we turn these on, your low beams on this quad are just gonna be the two headlights down at the front there. When you flip over to the high beam, then the light on the bars turns on. And this makes for a pretty good spread, but as you can see, pretty dim. So we will pull out one of the halogens and switch that for an LED to get a good comparison. These lights are actually really easy to get at. Just gotta flip our hood up here. And with that tray out of the way, you can get to the bulb super easy. That just pulls out like that. This twists counterclockwise. Pull that out. So yeah, if you were to look that up, that would come up as a fog light. So one important thing to look for when you're trying to pick out LEDs for any machine is that the diode is going to be in the same location as the original filament would and probably not holding these exactly perfect, but it looks like these LEDs are in the prime location. Another thing that really had me sold on these lights is the fact that they don't use a fan. So instead you've just got all of this surface area cut into the aluminum back here, and that just works as a bit of a heat sink to kind of cool down the electronics that run the diodes. So I think this is gonna be something that we still need to keep an eye on. Obviously, where this is gonna be located could definitely get packed up with some mud, but I think this is still a much better option than a fan that actually has to spin and move to do any cooling. The insulation is super easy. You just match up the fins with the slots in the housing. Give that a twist. Plug this in. And this can only get plugged in one direction, but it looks like we're gonna have to maybe guess on that, so we'll stick it in there. So before we fire this up, there's a couple things I'm noticing. One, this sticks out a bit farther than I guess I thought it was able to. Uh, I think that might be a bit of an issue for this thing. Yeah, that looks like a problem. Hmm. I'm pretty sure these are supposed to fit my machine. Not sure what's going on with that. Uh, the other thing that is kind of making me wonder here is that, as you can see, the diodes in there are facing directly up and down, which means most of their light is going to be directed at the bottom of the headlight and the top. And a reflector housing, generally you want the light shot out to the right and left where the reflector is. These are not adjustable in any way, so you're pretty much stuck with that, so I don't know that that's really gonna work out so hot for us. So yeah, definitely a much hotter, brighter beam pattern, much more focused too on the halogen LED, pretty pitiful looking. I think just because that diode is not putting that light where it should be, uh, I don't necessarily doubt that this LED would be brighter if those were actually in the right spot, but without them aimed in the right position, I mean, we're not really getting much more than just a, a better look when you're looking at it from here. I'm definitely not gonna be gaining any vision at night. I think 
Definitely be losing some. And sadly, sometimes with LEDs, this is just something you're gonna have to go through. Not every LED is gonna work the same in every vehicle. Every reflector housing is a little bit different. You can definitely get an LED to fit in a certain reflector housing and have it work absolutely phenomenally. I have tested lots of lights that I really like that have worked out very well. Maybe in a different four-wheeler where those little tabs in there are oriented different, uh, so they would be kind of shining, like I said, to the left and to the right. Uh, maybe it would work a lot better, but in here, I mean, this is, this is gonna be a, a no-go for me, sadly. So I guess I'm gonna pull this out and we'll move on to the light bar. So in the factory bumper here, we do have some holes that we can use or we could use if we wanted the light bar right up against this removable grate here. Um, I don't know how often we'll have to pull this off, but if you need to spray your radiator off, it sure is convenient to just have that tab. Um, then I don't really wanna have to unbolt my light bar anytime we need to do that. So rather than use the holes, I think I'm just gonna drill some matching ones a little bit closer to the bend here. Honestly, I like that idea better anyways. I think that'll look a little bit better there rather than hidden way back there. So I used a 516 to drill those, and now that I've got those in place, I'm gonna run the wiring down here. And those 516 holes I think should be just about right here. I'll have to kind of mess with this a little bit, get everything lined up, get it aimed the way I want it to be. Uh, you can kind of tilt it that way, depending on where you tighten down those bolts, where these brackets go into the back of this. So we'll kind of get that all figured out, and then I will put blue Loctite on the fasteners that go into here and the fasteners that are poked through the bottom of here. This wire will go around the back here. So I'm not saying that this is 100% the best way to go. Uh, but this is just kind of what I came up with. So come out from under there. And up around there, zip tied to the frame. Shoots around, zip tied to the factory wiring harness there. And that comes around here. Stays in the wiring harness. Staying away from the fan. Again, just hanging out with the factory wiring harness. And then we end up up here. I think what I'm gonna try to do is just sneak that plug underneath this piece here, which you can remove pretty easy. There's just the two torque screws and then that. Gonna sneak this in behind the battery here. And then on the other wiring harness here, we've got the single plug here that's gonna plug into the wire that I just ran. And then these two are gonna go up underneath the headlight cowl here. So I'm also gonna pull this off. I think I might actually see if I can get this relay in here somewhere since I don't have much real estate anywhere else. I think I should still be able to whip this around here somewhere and get these two connected. Just got four of these little guys here. I think the easiest way to access that light bulb and the plugs is just going to be to pull this light out. So you've got to remove your little adjustment pin here. Uh, that just loosens up and then you can aim this and snug it back down. Uh, but with that removed, then you can just pull these little rubber bands off of here. With that removed, the light should just come straight up. <laughs> and the whole thing will come off. Pull my original harness down, work the new one up into position. Got the rubber bands back on, got this back in place. The majority of the new wiring is just stuffed down right back behind the battery here. Um, and when you're doing this, I, it wouldn't be a bad idea to give your battery a shake. This is actually kind of loose in here, so I just split a piece of old rubber hose and shoved that under here. And now this is nice and solid. You definitely don't want this vibrating around in here and rubbing a hole in any of your wires. Make sure you're not pinching any wire in between here. Make sure it's all gonna be in a safe spot. My relay, I've got that just actually anchored, well, sort of anchored here. It's not coming off of there. I just drilled the hole out a little bit and then it fit right on top of the 
the end of that. Ended up moving actually the majority of my wires over to this side and that's kind of nice because then it's more centered. So when you're turning this, you're not swinging it from one side to the other. It's kind of just chilling in the middle there as the bars turn. I would recommend turning your key on so you've got your EPS activated and then steer this back and forth a couple times just to make sure you're not yanking on any wires, not pinching any wires and that everything is in a happy location. So the real beauty of this kit is that that 12 inch light bar is now gonna be activated by your normal high beam switch. So if you hit oncoming traffic, all you have to do is flip this back down to low just like you normally would. You don't have to fumble with the switch up here or anything. It's just one switch, this light turns off, the light bar turns off. Absolutely love that, definitely the way to go, much safer. So we'll get this turned on and see what this bar does. There's our pitiful low beams. We'll flip it over to high. And we get, again, this light turning on, which is kind of the upper section here. There's the really bright hot beam in the center. This is gonna be the kind of center portion of the bar. It's got a reflector behind those LEDs that kind of shoots the light directly there. And then kind of the whole wall is lit up a bit. It's a little bit hard to tell here, but when I switch this off, you can kind of tell the light will drop. So that portion that's getting this whole area is due to the two outer sections of the light bar. That's gonna be the wider beam pattern. So there's a different reflector on those that kind of scatters the light and adds a lot of nice fill. So real test of course is gonna be to get this out on the road. So let's take this out and see how it does out there. So I've been out a couple times testing these. Uh, it's not completely dark now, which was kind of by design. Uh, if it's pitch black out, it's kind of deceiving. Um, sometimes you can't see anything at all with the halogens and uh, it's just a little bit, I don't know, it d doesn't give it a real real life feel. So hopefully this will be better. Got the moon out, so that's adding a little bit of light, but I think that'll be all right. Always good to get out when the, the full moon's out or close to it anyways. Uh, so. One thing that I've got to mention, which uh, I will hopefully be finding a different solution for in the future anyway, uh, but when you go from this really bright light bar down to your low beams, if they're still halogens, when you, whoops, all those are off, when you pass a car, uh, it can be kind of dangerous. I did that the other night and I actually, I thought that I did that, but uh, it turned out after I passed the car, then I could kind of barely see the, the dim glow of the halogens again. But I mean, uh, it, maybe they're enough on their own, uh, you know, on the trail. But anytime you get oncoming traffic, these things are dangerous. But especially, like I said, when you flip from this back down to that, you realize how poor these are. So hopefully we can find a, a different, better solution. But as far as the light bar goes, I am definitely impressed with this. Uh, the kit went together really pretty smooth. Kind of a lot of wire to jam down into places. But I mean, I guess if, you know, if this kit was going on a UTV or a ATV where the battery is somewhere else, You'd probably be really happy to have that extra length so uh, i would say i think this is a good kit i think you might be able to do something a little bit cheaper if you wanted to i think depending on the the wattage that the light bar uh needed you might be able to just tap in directly to that high beam light i don't know that for sure you'd have to run calculations or do some testing or whatever uh, you might not need the relay but I have to say, I mean, if you don't want to mess with any of that stuff and, you know, that's not something that you're really into, you just want something you can plug and go, I would say this is definitely a very, very nice setup kit and uh, is definitely worth looking into. I, I think uh, the light bar itself isn't anything spectacular as far as 12-inch light bars go, but I have to say, man, I mean, this is a huge improvement over the stock lights. I mean... These, these are like driving around with fog lights, and uh, this is like driving around and actually being able to see where you're going. So I'll put a link for it down in the description. Other than that, guys, take care. Stay safe, stay swanky. Get out, enjoy this beautiful world if you can. And if you can, check out some more videos in the meantime. And, uh, and uh, just have a good one, I guess.